Later today, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton meets with seven opposition leaders from Syria, where the government is accused of killing more than 60 civilians on Monday. Since the first anti-government protests began in that Middle Eastern country, Western media has seen little of the government's brutal crackdown on the opposition. Correspondent Clarissa Ward went undercover inside Syria to give us a first-hand look, and she's here to tell us that story this morning. Clarissa, good to see you. Good morning. Well, since spring, thousands of Syrians have been demanding an end to the 40-year dictatorship of the Assad family. And since the revolution began, it's estimated that Syrian forces have killed 4,000 civilians. For months, this is what we've seen of the revolution in Syria. Shaky cell phone video of demonstrations met with bullets. To meet the people holding those cell phones, we entered the country as tourists, carrying only a small camera. Razan Zaytouni insists on using her real name, but she cannot show her face. She is in hiding, and the regime is looking for her. Are you scared? Who is not? But we have to continue. We decided to start our revolution. This is what we have been dreaming of long time ago. She took us to the Damascus suburb of Douma to the funeral of a 16-year-old boy shot by security forces while he ducked for cover at a protest the day before. Men and women poured in by the hundreds, their grief tinged with defiance. This is real Syria, okay? If you come, you will see real bodies. They are not stones. They are not toys. They are real bodies. They want international military support. And they say they will not give up their protest until President Assad's regime falls. A helicopter circled overhead, but the chanting only got stronger. We are peaceful and they are shooting us, they shouted. We want freedom. There's a special graveyard for protesters who have been gunned down in Douma. Here they're called Shaheed or martyrs. There are 60 graves. A man just handed me this photograph. It's of a family member of his who was killed. He was only 13 years old. The UN estimates that at least 4,000 people have been killed. Activists tell us the number is much higher. But the violence has only fueled the protests, which are creeping closer to the heart of the capital. Just outside of Damascus and suburbs like this, people are out here every single night, and they're demanding an end to the regime. These protesters had rarely seen reporters from outside the country. They handed us notes. We don't shed tears for the martyrs, we shed tears for the cowards, one read. Later on, Razan introduced us to people who have paid a high price for demonstrating against the Assad regime. This 20-year-old was shot three times at this protest in July, captured on a cell phone. Five months later, he is bedridden, but he says the minute he can walk, he will be back on the streets, marching for freedom. He says the regime is the devil. Certainly, it's a regime that shows no signs of listening to its own people. What's your message to uh, President Assad? Leave. Leave now because you know that you will leave at the end. But with more victims and with more suffering of, of the people. So just leave and leave us to start our new future, our new country. You, you got enough of our blood. In the last couple of days, two well-known activists have been arrested by Syrian security forces, really highlighting the enormous risk that these men and women are taking to speak their minds. You talk about enormous risk. You did this alone, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, and it, I guess, as my, I'm a little bit blown away, the fact that you're able to pull this off alone. What were some of the biggest challenges that you faced? And did you ever feel that your life was, was in danger at that point? Uh, I mean, I think there are several challenges that you're facing. Obviously, the logistical challenges of trying to go undercover. You can't be speaking English on the streets. I was always wearing a headscarf uh, so that I didn't attract attention. But also, the people I was with are very much wanted by the Assad regime. So every time you go through one of those checkpoints, you're kind of holding your breath, uh, praying that they don't do any further investigation and that someone in the car is going to get arrested.
given how little access we in the West have to Syria getting in as far as the press goes, do you think we're getting an accurate portrayal here of what's happening there, having seen it with your own eyes? No, I don't. I really don't. It's, it's a desperately desperate situation that's happening over there. And all that we're seeing are these shaky YouTube videos. Yeah. Um, and, of course, the government's making it so hard for international journalists to go in there and do their jobs. And until more people do go in, I don't think it's possible for the rest of the world to understand what's truly happening. I think you probably had a pretty good idea of what you were getting into and what you would see. Did anything, though, surprise you or catch you off guard? I think what really surprised me was the diversity of the opposition. It wasn't just one group of people. There were men, there were women, there were Christians, there were Muslims, they were old, they were young. Um, the need and the desire for change there is really pretty widespread. All right. Really great stuff. CBS's Clarissa Ward, thank you. Thank, thank you. you.